the, the formal um, presentations, if you like. So I guess now we'll have uh, we'll have a period of time for for open discussion. So shall, shall we start by seeing if there's any if there's any questions that anybody has, any burning questions that anybody has in the audience? Any hands up? Right there. Yeah, Sorry, could you um, say your name, please? And okay. Sure. So, uh, is this on? Yeah. Um, so that's right. At the moment, it's a, a publisher's pays um, model in terms of providing value for their authors. So, so that's the model, and it's, it's based on size of publisher. It's a very simple model. Um, going forwards, we're also talking to institutions, um, and I think there's some interesting developments there in terms of institutions being able to um, buy uh, a service to help researchers at that institution as well. Um, so yeah, it, it's a it's free for any author in the world can rock up to Kudos. Um, and use the tools, and if you're with a publisher that has paid for it, you get additional tools, additional value, and so on. Sure, but come and chat with us later. <laughs> okay, so um, so I guess as moderator, it's my responsibility to come up with a question. So um, <laughs> so I will, and I guess this is to this is to all the panelists. Um, we've we've talked a lot about the emerging themes. We've talked a lot about some concrete examples of of companies, of technologies, of, of things that, uh, that publishers need to be thinking about. So if you were going to suggest one thing from your presentation that, uh, that uh, publishers should go, go away from this meeting and say, I'm going to look into this this afternoon and, and um, you know, I'm, I'm going to explore whether this is going to be useful for our business, what would that, what would that one thing be? Um, so I guess we'll, we'll go in the order, I suppose, that we, that we get the presentation. So, um, so David, you want to... Give that a go. Okay, um, the one thing I would suggest is to, uh, at submission, ask authors to provide a lay summary um, in, in simple language as to why their paper is important. Um, but the, the broader um, issue, I think, there is about standards. Um, and at the moment, there are no standards, as far as we're aware, of how long a lay summary should be, uh, impact statement, uh, adding resources, and so on. So I'm very keen to see standards developed um, in this area, I'm a big fan of standards. I chair the Counter Executive Committee uh, for Usage uh, Download Standards. So I'd like to see some standards emerging so that we're all doing this in the same way. Uh, because I think there's a, there's a danger that if, as an author, you submit a paper to one publisher, you enter your lay summary, it's then rejected and then gets moved to a, another publisher, you know, a second choice publisher perhaps. Um, we want to make that portable in the same way that peer review is becoming portable. So, um, so yeah, start collecting lay summaries and do that in a standard way, rather than everybody trying to do that um, individually. Um, yeah, I think to, to follow up on that, I uh, think it's uh, very important for us to think of the tools that we're using in the publishing process as this, in the same, and how they apply to pre-publication as well as post-publication, and looking to support information and the systems so that those can be utilized and that they, the systems and the information we're creating and the value that we create can also be uh, utilized pre and post. So s systems like annotation or systems like uh, visualization and data tools or systems like uh, being able to access information through APIs, machine readable information, those that come out of the lab as well as those that then can be reused after publication. Those should be supported during publication and during the publishing process as well. And so that we think of the entire tool set as one continual um, value add. Uh, my, my thoughts on, on this is that, um, that there is, I mean, talking about the disintermediation of the, the kind of publisher library kind of um, pathway for, for access to content. I think that there is an, an opportunity to kind of re-engage researchers with the with the publisher platform by offering value other than the the research article itself. So the thing that uh, that I think the publishers ought to be looking at first are what are the kind of low hanging fruit? How can you enhance the platform? How can you um, add you know even just a widget or something like that that adds real value, real meaningful value that will keep researchers coming back to your platform rather than downloading it from PubMed Central or, or you know, swapping it in academia.edu or, or something like that. So how can, you, how can you keep people on your platform? What kind of value can you add to, to researchers? 
Okay. Um, so my, um, I guess my, if I had to pick one thing that I, I, I'd uh, want to re-emphasise, <coughs> excuse me, that would be search. I think you know the, the you know how we, you know we, uh, uh, as an industry, you know, we need to engage with that. But also on an individual basis, we need to engage with that. It, you know, we we can't afford to um, kind of cross our fingers and hope that the, the traffic will come you know we need to make sure that we're absolutely fully engaged with that this is this is something that is part of uh, any any fully um, you know thought through and, and, and realized web strategy so you know it's about it's about search for me that's that's uh, not terribly sexy but terribly terribly important I think that's a good question, Renny. Should, should I take that one, seeing as it was directed at, 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 at the search question? So, I mean, you know, if we're going to, if we make, if we make, the, so the question is, if we make search, if we improve our, if we improve search, does that does that reduce the number of downloads? Um, I, I mean, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a tricky circular question um, because you know we you know we are. Uh, I think the, 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 there's, there are two angles to that. First of all, there's an education angle. You know, you know, on, on the face of it, arguably. We, we, you know, you might, I mean, you might see that as a, as a result, but don't forget that there are several different kinds of search and several different kinds of discovery. Well, that works properly because that's part of user experience that we've got absolutely direct control over. Um, and if that's generating, um, you know, frustration for users, that's going to ultimately dilute the brand in the way that I, you know, alluded to um, earlier. Um, when we're engaging with Google, however, you know, we're dealing with an entity that we have very little control over. We have some degree of control, though, and that's what I'm, in a way, that's my kind of plea, is, to, is for us to engage with that degree of control we have over with, with Google. Because that's, that's, that's an area, as I said, you know, that, that affects us hugely. And what, so, you know, that flips your question around, in a way, I think, um, Randy, because what we're saying there is that, you know, if, if, if we're poorly indexed by Google, we're just simply not getting the traffic in the first place. And so if we improve our position with Google, if we improve our rankings, if we improve our page rank, if we think about how we link our different web platforms together in an intelligent way to, to boost our page rank, and we come higher up in the Google rankings and that drives our traffic from Google, that's going to increase our downloads and it's going to reduce our cost per download. So, you know, I think there are two separate issues there. One of which is, is important and it's directly under our control and we, you know, it, it requires possibly some education around counter stats and, and, and those types of, of uh, you know, issues where the raw cost per you know, download is, is always something that needs to be qualified with, a, with, with, with some context. But the, the other one, which is the gorilla or the elephant in the room, um, is something which, which can only have an upside in, in, if, we, if we engage with it in, a, in, in, in the right way. It's also important to see what um, that search engine optimization and, and ideas around search, they're really about the content, right? So it's about making the content deli delivery optimized. And so it's not necessarily about us versus Google. It's about us versus our own design. And I mean, your, your slide about the, you know, the content is only taking a very small chunk of the big real estate. That's, that's us fighting ourselves. It's not us fighting Google. And I think that that's really the, the auditing that needs to take place, which is how do you make the content as easy, uh, easily digestible as possible, not just for humans, but for machines. And that includes the website, not just feeds and that sort of thing. And just to add to that, it's a really interesting question, really, I think, in terms of, you know, if, if searching is better targeted, then you're going to have fewer downloads. But is that a better quality of download? So at the moment, we just measure, you know, one, there's, there's a download, whether that was uh, an, a paper that was not relevant at all, or whether that's something that's going to solve a major disease. So I think there's a concept of kind of relevant downloads and, and beyond the download. Um, I would argue that actually a, a more targeted uh, search with better context um, is of more value than just a click that then someone hits the back button. So, so maybe there's some work to be done around um, quality, not quantity of downloads. Um, and you could almost imagine a sort of a TiVo thumbs up, thumbs down, was this what you wanted when you actually get to the article as well. So 
Um, yeah, at the moment, a click is a click, but uh, in terms of value, it's, it's very different. And, and I, I know that uh, it's not public yet, but there, there is some work uh, being proposed to, to look at beyond downloads um, and ways of sort of interpreting uh, value beyond uh, just the download. So uh, watch this space. I, I think that Richard has a very good point about, about user experience. Um, because to, to my mind, when a researcher comes to, uh, to, a, to a publisher platform, they have a pretty solid idea of what they're looking for. You know, most readers, they, they either have a citation already or they know the kind of content that they're, that they're interested in. And if your search is, is not adequate for them to be able to easily find that, or it takes longer for them to find it than, say, searching through PubMed or Archive or you know, SSRN or some other, or, or Google, then they're going to use that as their mechanism of discovery rather than your own website. But if they have a good experience and can find the content that they're interested in more easily, then they're going to come back to your website in order to be able to, dis to discover that content. So you get return visits, and then you get a much better opportunity to engage with them. I would kind of I would disagree. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're on this page. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the line. The um, I mean, the world uses Google to discover stuff. Uh, people use PubMed, and I think that uh, it's there's a there's a um, if we if, if we try to keep make our sites sticky and assume that people are going to come back to us, if we are assuming that there isn't the broader world of information. People are going to go back to PubMed, they're going to go back to PMC, they're going to go back to Google, and I think that it's the optimization from that handoff that's most important. The amount of publishers where you go to Google and you click on a link and you don't end up on the actual article or you don't see something relevant when you get to that article page, that's huge. That's a huge op opportunity, and I think that we should be more interested in trying to optimize that handoff than necessarily trying to get people to be sticky within each of our individual silos. Yeah, well, I, the, the reason why I say that is I think that people don't come back to to portals because they are to publisher portals because they because they're poor at doing it, and I think that you might not get you know the dominant um, flow of traffic, but there's certainly there's certainly traffic to be had. There are certainly yeah, opportunities yeah. to engage to engage with researchers. And in terms of the dis and in terms of that kind of handoff from someplace else, so I've attached myself to the table as in. in terms of the you know the the kind of handoff. I think that one thing that we need to look at is things like knowledge bases um, and, and how we integrate with discovery solutions that, that, that institutions and universities need. Because absolutely, um, some of the knowledge bases I was going to I was going to name a company and criticise them, or I won't do that. But one of the, some of the some of the products that are out there which which have link resolvers and knowledge bases have a reputation amongst researchers of doing a poor job of connecting them to. To the full text of that article, mm -hmm. now, particularly when they're linking to things like like aggregators and stuff like that, is that they is that very often you know you follow that link and it takes you to a, a location that, that that isn't the full text. So there's there are definite infrastructure issues with the ability for researchers to get from a citation index right. to the to the full text of the article. And I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, I mean if you look at the layout of PubMed or PMC and the, where the content lies, it's very much you know back to what we're talking about with SEO. Right? It's if you look at your website, your publisher website, and you look at those sites and you say, what's the difference? It's, it's all your ads and your crazy navigation versus the content. And you know, you talk to Google Scholar and they say, what we're looking for is that the abstracts above the fold. And then you look at most publisher websites and the abstracts are below the fold. Um, you look at PMC or PubMed and they're above. I mean, it's just it's an obvious search engine. You know, going back to the SEO model, it's just our discussion. It's, you have to start positioning your sites so that they, they can be as sticky as the, uh, the alternatives. Yeah, and I think if there's also, sorry, yeah. dominating the discussion, right. yeah, there's, there's also an opportunity to integrate into, into things like reference managers and other types of discovery platforms. And so it's, it's not, perhaps we have a, a notion of wanting to keep people on our sites that's, that's, that's more than we need to have. Because at the end of the day, what we want is for our content to be used and to be useful and to be cited. Right? So it's so there's 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 room to there's room to kind of integrate and using APIs and things like that to be able to kind of allow people access to 
content that's not necessarily directly off your platform, but is delivered through other methods. Sorry, we'll stop having this discussion now and yeah. see if there's any more questions at the back. Yes. The question is, is, let me see if I've, I've got this. Um, so for, for libraries um, being stuck in the middle, in, in, in the sense you're, you're interested in text mining for, for the library to be able to text mine or for people to be able to... to Okay, so that's, I mean, that's, a, I think that this, there's a, I, don't, you know, I think you're right. I mean, in one sense, I think that we, you know, we, if we are looking to how to provide libraries, at the moment, publishers are providing libraries with metadata. So we, you know, we, we, we're reasonably good at downstreaming metadata. I say reasonably good. Some people might disagree with that. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, there's an awareness that that's an important issue um, uh, from, from there are industry initiatives and standards around that. Um, uh, enabling the next level of access, which is a kind of, which is the sort of, if you like, the kind of text mining access. Um, we do have the, the Crossref um, text and data mining um, initiative, which I, I pointed to earlier. Um, it's, it's, it's a kind of, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a tool, though. it's very much just an API. And so, you know, how, how, how that fits into the, you know, the growth of what, what we call the kind of web scale discovery services for libraries, which again, are sort of, that's a kind of handoff um, approach for libraries in the sense of that those are all systems which you have a reasonably small degree of control over in, in some sense. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that there's a conjunction there. I think that, the you know, that when I pointed to text and data mining earlier, I'm, I'm thinking of there being you know, a, a relatively small uh, but important use case for that for researchers. Some researchers do want to mine the literature, and, and we need to we need to engage with that and help them to, to do that. Um, but equally, there's also a, a bigger imperative for publishers, I think, to to mine their own content, not just because it might have production efficiencies, but also to understand it better. So, I mean, I, I, you know, I'd, I'd be interested to know more about how libraries would want to engage with that environment because um, it's, uh, it, it, in a sense, there's, a, there's, a, the, 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 there's, there's more room for disintermediation there, in a way. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit, yeah, I, I have that same question. What is, it, what is it that you see that libraries need to do data mining for? Do you mean, like, you don't mean metadata, but you mean, like, real data, like, how... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I strongly believe in the direct connection between publisher and researcher. Yeah, yeah. yeah so to yeah to repeat the to repeat the question, it's um, it's is there a role for libraries to to act as um, I guess uh, um, I guess to uh, to 
pass on the information about how researchers want to work with information, how researchers want to mine the information that's available, to mine the data that's available in publications, um, and to communicate that to publishers so that publishers can better de better deliver um, products and, and data and, and ways of accessing that data that's more useful to those constituents in that institution. Um, but to my mind, I'm very much a fan of the of the direct interaction between the publisher and and the researcher. I think it's it makes sense for for publishers to listen to directly to researchers to learn directly from them about what they want to do with the content, how they want to do how they want to do the science. That doesn't mean that I don't see a role at all for for librarians, but I'm not sure that that's where the best role of a librarian lands. I don't think being basically passing the message on is not necessarily, in my opinion, the best the best use of, of librarians' time. I think that I think that um, there's lots of work to be done in in things like you know documenting research output. There's lots of work to be done in in making sure that access is available. There's a role to play um, developing. Um, archiving solutions and and I think there needs to be collaboration between libraries and publishers in order to to, to better resolve that open issue. I'm I'm just not sure that that's I'm not sure that that is you know, the ideal role for, for librarians to play. Cause I think there's there's just room for kind of confusion there. But that's just my that's just my opinion. Um, so I guess we've uh, we've run over a little bit now. Um, so if there's uh, no more questions, I think it's uh, pretty much time for coffee. And uh, so thanks everybody for for turning up. And thanks for the great questions. And um, yes, and the session that's next is uh, I think uh, Adrian Stanley is going to be um, moderating um, a session on uh, on. I think global publishers and, and what's happening in the in the international community. Uh, we have um, we have Cielo here, we have Abel, Abel Packer here, and we have Yan, Yan Shui from from China. And I think that's going to be a very interesting um, interesting session. So thanks everybody for coming, and we'll see you after the coffee break.